This is the Pebble Go No Go task. It's a simple um, version of the, a Go No Go task. That in and the basic idea <coughs> is that you um, only respond when a target appears. So here I'm supposed to respond only to the P and not the R. So there's a P, there's a P, there's a P. There's a P, and it goes pretty quickly, and there was an R, and I clicked, so that was an error. So you have to not respond when it's not a P. And this is, there's nothing special about the fact that there's stars in a grid. This could easily have been done with a single star in the middle, or not even a star. This was designed, or modeled on a task that was um, used, I think, on children. And so, um, the original researchers developed this grid system, maybe to make it more like a game. But the basic idea is, <coughs> for a certain number of trials, you go through looking for the, the P when it's mostly P's, and then you get a second block where you look for the P when it's mostly R's. And so this can give you an idea of sort of response thresholds and, and uh, maybe things like impulsivity and it's often been tied to certain um, brain networks. So um, just a little bit about the task. If we look at um, go, no, go tasks have been used. Um, are, it's more of a class of tasks. It's actually <coughs> almost identical to what people call continuous performance tasks. So, um, you know, it is a continuous performance task. Continuous performance tasks are go, no, go tasks. Uh, this is based on this Bezgen, Baker, Lozano, and Rain paper from 2009 assessing inattention and impulsivity in children. So um, uh, I developed the task based on the one they described. It's been translated into uh, a number of languages. And um, there are a number of different parameters you can set to um, change how it works. You can so we, let's look at that next. So this is available within the test battery under Go No Go. Um, and if we look at some of the parameters with this edit button, by default, it will do 32 um, repetitions of the PR design. And the, the design, is, I think, is five trials, one P to four R's or something like that. Um, yeah, well, four to one. So by default, the design is four P P's to every one R. You could change this to make them equally likely, or you could change it to make them even more biased. And this will um, tell you how many <coughs> um, repetitions there are. By default, it's 32. 32 times five is like 170. So that's about how many trials there are, uh, 1,500 milliseconds between each uh, stimulus. And because it's a <coughs> go no go task, that's how frequently the stimulus comes up. It doesn't um, wait for a response. If you don't make a response before the next stimulus appears, you've missed it. Um, that's how you indicate a non-response. So 180 times one and a half, you know, this is a three or four minute task. If you go through the whole thing, you could make it longer or shorter. Um, the other thing you can change is whether you use response based on the shift key. Um, by default, um, you respond with the shift key, but the parameters, this parameter setting, you can actually um, respond with the um, mouse button. This might be useful because the mouse is a little more um, sensitive or maybe a little easier to use. You could also give someone a mouse um, and they don't have to touch the keyboard at all. They, you don't even have to give them access to the keyboard um, in that case. You could have two mice set up, one for an experiment or one for a subject, and they just hold it in their hand and make the responses. This might be useful for a kid or, um, or something like that, so it's, they don't have to type on a large keyboard. You can also change the color of the <coughs> um, star to use. There's no real uh, 
consequences of this. I suppose you could make it really dark. Um, you can make it black so it blends in or gray. Uh, you might uh, believe that it has an effect, but I su suspect it would be pretty difficult to find an effect because it's not even what you're responding to. Uh, so if we want to use those parameters, we can select the parameter settings these of this novel set, run, and now it's red. Um, and so on. So uh, let, let's then look at the data that appears. If we look at the data, there's a couple files that are saved. Um, I've run this a couple times uh, as practice. So one is a pooled data file that all subjects data go into. So this can be handy because it automatically creates a composite record. <coughs> so here was subject 121, subject 123, subject 124, and so on. Um, the different columns, uh, well, for an individual subject, each of these will sa be saved in their own file as well. We'll look at that in a little bit. <coughs> There's also this log file. Um, that tells you times when things started and um, started and completed, round one, round two, round three, round four, um, and so on. So uh, the round one and round three are practice rounds, and round two and round four are the testing rounds. So you could help figure out when things um, were completed, how long they took, and, and things like that. Um, at the end of each run, a single line is, is saved also that gives the overall, I think this is the overall time taken, the number of trials, um, and, uh, the error rate or something like that. It's not too useful and you'd want probably to um, build that yourself, but Possibly, uh, you uh, some, with some edits, you could save out the right parameters. Now, if we look within each subject folder in the data, um, there's going to be two files saved. One which is the trial by trial log. Um, I'll open this up with the text editor so we can see the headers label the um, different columns. This can open up with an Excel because it's a CSV file as well. <coughs> it um, will tell you practice, test, practice, test. So there's four blocks here. Um, blocks are labeled 0, 1, 2, and 3. And um, then indicating the correct response, whether it's P or R. A trial number per in each block the choice that was uh, made, that means which of the three, which of the four s cells did it appear in, the X and Y coordinate of that choice. Um, maybe you want to look at laterality so you can then detect if it's left or right of the midline. Um, what the stimulus was, so here um, in the first blocks, it's one if it's a P and zero if it's an R. Later, it's one if it's an R and zero if it's a P. So it indicates whether it's a response trial or a non-response trial. Next is the actual uh, response given. And so if it's a key press, it's going to be R shift or L shift or none. And if it's not, it's going to be a mouse, something uh, recording the mouse click, mouse coordinates and things like that. Um, this is whether they responded at all, this is whether they were correct, and so here was an error trial, you see that's incorrect. Um, this indicates the start time of the trial and the response time of the trial. For a non-response, I'm guessing, 
uh, the response time is going to be 1450, 50 milliseconds shorter than the ISI. So if you, you need to respond within 50 milliseconds of the the next stimulus appearing uh, for it to count. So that's some of the data, the raw data, and you could analyze this yourself using Excel or uh, custom scripts within um, within any stats package. But also, uh, a report is generated. This report is only generated once you complete the whole test, so if you end early, you won't get that. So the demos that I, demo I just showed that I didn't complete it, this won't be generated for. So this gives <coughs> um, an overall number correct, number of errors, mean accuracy, mean error rate, but then also for each round it gives this. So round one, two, accuracy, round one and two, response time. Um, this is excluding the practice. So here, round one is actually the block labeled uh, block one, because uh, block the first round practice is block zero. Round two is actually the the um, round two accuracy and response time is actually the block labeled three because block two is um, round two practice. So here we can see um, for accuracy, uh, if you look at the P versus the R in each case, um, you can see mean accuracy here for P is 100%, R is 62%. Uh, on the eight, um, I guess on the eight R's, that means um, I must have, I shouldn't have clicked at all and I must have clicked two or three times. Um, similarly, on the P versus R he on the second round, um, uh, accuracy mean accuracy was ninety percent versus one hundred percent for R. Um, here's the response time differences. So, in the first round, R is faster than P. The second round, P is faster than R, as you'd expect. And so if you um, compare these two, you might be able to get a sort of response bias measure. I'm not exactly sure what um, the original paper used as their measures, but I think these are pretty close, or you could use the same analysis methods. All right, finally, um, you might want to uh, change some aspects of the instructions, either translate it or make them clearer. There are three pages of basic instructions here. You could edit um, if you if you want to change change those instructions or debriefing. You could change this, especially if you have multiple tasks that you want to put together. You could change this to indicate please hit OK to continue to the next task. Uh, this indicates that this is English, so if you want to translate it to a different language, you could um, s uh, enter the two-letter code here and write each translation. And I've got a separate uh, text string for key shift key vers versus mouse uh, presses. Um, right now, there's probably a lot of different edits you could make to the task. Um, that aren't available in the parameters. Maybe you want to change the letter. Uh, maybe you want to change um, the size of the letter. Uh, um, what else? We can look here. Um, maybe you want to change the number of blocks. Um, all of that would take uh, so, sort of editing the original script in one way or another. Um, and it wouldn't be too difficult, but you know, a lot of the uh, data reporting at the end is sort of expects uh, very specific numbers of blocks and things like that. So it would be it would require um, it would require trying to figure out and edit <coughs> additional rounds or something like that in order to, in order to compute this. All right. Finally, I just wanted to show. Uh, some of the research that uh, has been done with this type of task. Clearly, if you look at go no go task on Google Scholar, there are 
tens of thousands of of um, articles out there, and the task is very general. I don't think there's any um, real uh, consensus on what it means to be a go no go task, other than um, it's any task where you either respond if it's the target you're looking for, or you don't respond if it's not. Um, these are often you I guess are used a lot in <coughs> fMRI and neuro psychological testing and neuro, um, these types of methods because they have a very fixed time structure. And so, um, you know, you know that the stimulus comes exactly every 1500 milliseconds or 20 seconds or whatever. Um, <coughs> also, there's, there are, you know, some things you can tell with uh, maybe ERP because um, you can look at maybe evoked potentials when people aren't making a response. So you can't see that they're not, you can see that they're not making a response, but you can maybe still detect sort of suppression of that response in those cases um, using ERP measures. Uh, within, uh, if I search for Pebble Go No Go, there's about 150 results. Um, these include, well, the original Be Bezjun paper, which didn't use a Pebble version, um, and a lot of other things that maybe, you know, there are some of these which use Pebble along with other things. Uh, I think there's a few tests, like a few um, examples, maybe um, this one and um, Marco Moni's have um, used it to end published uh, normative data sets for children, looking at influence of age and attention uh, on this task. And so if you're using it in children, this would be a really good paper to look at to compare for a normative data set. All right, well, that is the Pebble Go No Go task, and it's available for free as part of the Pebble test battery. You can download this at pebble.sourceforge.net. Thank you.